Everybody knows that floor space in a garage is a premium. Today we're going to look at a way that you can take back some of that floor space by building a wall storage cabinet. We're going to be using some basic construction methods and the simplicity and strength of Craig Joinery. What we're really going to do is build some components that we can bring together on the wall to look like one big cabinet. The reason that we want to do it that way is it's going to make it a project that I can do by myself. Now the first of those components are going to be these plywood boxes. And if you look, you can see that we've drilled some holes in there. That's going to allow us to have some adjustable shelves to really maximize our storage potential. The second component is this face frame. And the face frame is like trim for the cabinet. It's going to cover up the veneer ends of this plywood and it's also going to make it look like one box when we're done. Now it also adds a lot of strength to the cabinet. Then the next thing we'll do is we'll make some simple plywood doors and we're going to add just enough trim to them to dress them up a little bit. We're going to be doing all of this using some basic materials. Really all we need are some solid stock lumber and a couple sheets of plywood. Now since I'm doing this by myself I want to cross cut these pieces of plywood to a size that's going to be safe for me to rip on the table saw by myself. So let's take a look at how we can cross cut this plywood and get it down to a size we can handle. This is one of the safest ways that I know of to cut a piece of plywood down to size. There's a couple things that make this a fairly easy way to do it. The first one is we're completely supporting this piece of plywood with these two tube befores underneath it. And what's important about that is if you cut through a piece of plywood and the plywood can pinch in on the blade, then it's going to either try to throw that saw back or tear something up. So you want to have your plywood supported in such a way that when you complete the cut, the cutoff piece just stays there and there's no pinching of the blade. And the other thing is I'm going to use this homemade guide to guide the saw while I make the cut. All I did was take two pieces of plywood, one started out at about 12 inches wide and the other one was about 6 inches wide and I screwed one on top of the other and then before I tried to use it to make a cut, I ran the circular saw across it and it became customized to this saw. In other words, the distance from the edge of the fence to the blade is set up. Okay, let's take a look at how this works. As you can see, that piece just sat there, didn't have any tendency to pinch the blade or bind in any way, and that's really important. Okay, that's the last of my cross cuts. Now I've got all these pieces cut down to a size that I feel comfortable handling by myself. So now we're going to set up the table saw and make some rips. Now we're ready to start ripping our parts to their final size. You know, I could do all that just using the straight edge and the circular saw, but a table saw is a lot better and here's why. Once I set this fence, I can cut repetitive pieces and they're all going to be exactly the same. That's a lot quicker. There are some things that you need to know though about safety with a table saw. The number one one for me is to make sure that I always know where my hands are in relationship to the blade. And what I like to think about is I want to keep my hand about one hand's width away from the blade. So three to four inches away from the blade all the time. If I start to get closer than that, then I'm going to want to use a push stick and sometimes I'll use a push stick even if I'm not that close. It's important too when you're using a table saw to rip that you keep your cut going straight on through all the way through past the blade and I like to have and I think you just about have to have some sort of an outfeed table so that the material can rest on that when you're through with your cut. Don't ever reach over the blade to try and grab a piece when you're through cutting. The best thing to do is just shut the saw off and then walk around and grab the material. It may take you a little bit longer that way but it's a lot safer. Well, all our parts are cut to size. The next step is going to be drilling our holes for our Craig joinery. Then we'll be ready to actually assemble the boxes. 
I like to mount my Craig jig to a piece of plywood and then I can clamp that piece of plywood to my work table like this. I've also got a couple of extra supports here which are going to help me with supporting long pieces. Now, one of the things that we need to talk about for a minute is whenever you're doing woodworking, you always want to try to hide the ends of the boards or put them in the least conspicuous places. Whether that's plywood or solid lumber, it holds both ways. And what we're going to do when we build our boxes is the sides will run continuous and the top and bottom will fit in between those sides so that we don't see the ends of the plywood. And also, when we're making our pocket holes, we're going to try and put them in the least conspicuous place. For the top, we'll turn them up towards the ceiling, and then for the bottom, we'll turn them into the cabinet so they're hidden behind the doors. I want to start by working with my smaller tops and bottoms. I want to do a layout that lets me line up with my indexing mark on the jig and get things, they don't have to be perfect, but I want to stay pretty close. So I want to use this marking tool and that's going to save me a lot of time over using a tape measure. Now to make a really strong cabinet, I like to put about four pocket holes in each end of this. So what I'm going to do first is I'll come in here about like that. Then I'll make another mark here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. Okay, now I've laid out my outside holes and I'm going to come in to about four inches for the two inside holes. Now I'm ready to go ahead and drill some holes, so I'm just going to put it in the jig and I'll be able to line up those marks that I just did with the indexing mark on the jig. are all the holes that I'm going to use to attach the top and bottom to the two side pieces. Now I'm going to drill some holes that will attach the top and bottom to the face frame. And I can probably use just three holes, so what I'm going to do is spin this marking gauge around a little bit, and I'll just locate the first hole lined up with the back side of that pocket hole, and I'll mark one there. And then what I'm going to do Let's just turn this around and just eyeball it like that. And that's going to get me pretty close. So now I'm ready to drill those holes. Okay, that's all the holes that we need to put in this top piece. We're going to draw all the rest of the tops and bottoms, and then we're going to move on to the side pieces. Here's one of my side pieces. Now the only holes that I need to put in it are to attach it to the face frame. But since I get a lot of strength out of the face frame, I want to put five screw holes in here. And what I'll start out by doing is just coming somewhere around an inch and a half from each end. And then I want to eyeball the middle like that. And I just eyeball the middle between those two marks again. And that's going to get me close enough. Okay, that's all the drilling I've got to do for these side pieces. But there's one more place that I want the strength of Craig joinery, and that's these stretcher frame pieces. 
These stretcher frame pieces fit in between the sides, underneath the top, and above the bottom, and they allow me to have the strength I need to attach the cabinet to the wall, and also they're going to hold the cabinet square. They will allow me to build this cabinet without having a plywood back. What I want to do is put a couple holes in each end and then a couple more out in the middle to tie it all together. I'm just about ready to drill my last pocket hole. Once we're through drilling the holes, we've only got two more steps before we're ready to assemble the boxes. One step is we're going to need to drill those holes for the adjustable shelf pins, and the last step is a light sanding of all the parts on the inside because if you don't sand them before you put the boxes together, it's almost impossible to get into the corners. Well, we're down to drilling the holes for the adjustable shelf pins. What I'm going to use is just a homemade drilling jig. Pretty straightforward. It's got the top marked, and what I'm going to do is just flush one end with the bottom of the plywood. Actually, I want to flip it over like this to space it back from the edge of the board. I'll drill these holes, then I'll flip it over, flush with the bottom here, flush with the outside edge, and drill those holes. Now, because this jig isn't absolutely perfectly centered, it's important that I mark the top to make a pair. So I've laid them out with the pocket holes to the center, and I'm going to mark these two tops, and then I'll just drill from the bottom up on both of them. Now, we're using a quarter inch brad point bit. As you can see, we put some masking tape around it, and that masking tape is what's going to stop me from drilling all the way through the plywood. So what I'm going to do, I'll lay one aside for now. I'm going to place my drilling guide on there, flush with the bottom, arrow point towards the top, and I'll just take a couple clamps, clamp it in place, and then carefully drill these holes. Now, it's important that I flip the jig over to keep the proper spacing back from the edge. Keep it flush with the bottom. Now, I did make that jig out of a piece of fairly hard lumber. And you could probably drill three or four or five cabinets if you're, and if you're careful, maybe a little more than that, but the jig will eventually wear out because you're just drilling through wood. Okay, that's the last of the holes drilled. Now, the final step is just sanding. So I'm just going to take a random orbit sander and lightly pass over all these pieces before we assemble them. Well, I'm putting the top in this cabinet and this special clamp really makes it easy to do it because it holds it in place while I'm driving the screws. Grab my other side. And the other thing that's important as you're putting this together is make sure that you've got all the edges that are drilled for the face frame together. In other words, if I managed to screw this together like that, I'd be messed up. So make sure you turn them all the same way while you're going.